Good damn afternoon, Americans. Jericho Green here with you once again. And yes, you know it. JerichoGreen.net is where you need to be at the conclusion of this video presentation. And like I said in the last video, this Friday, which will be what? Today, January 6th. Uh-oh, <laughs> January 6th. Oh, shit. The worst day in American history. Um, I'll be talking about on my weekly exclusive video for the website, I'll be talking about the new move, where we moved, why we moved there, and the new sights and sounds of our neighborhood. Be there or be in the wrong damn place. Now, get your three-in-one flashlight here. 3in1flashlight.com, promo code Jericho20 for 20% off. Now, in an emergency, the right tool is everything. That's why I highly recommend having an everyday carry flashlight. An EDC flashlight is essential for power outages, car trouble, helping others, blinding assailants, and most importantly, peace of mind. The LED rechargeable 3-in-1 flashlight is a personal everyday carry flashlight choice for myself and most preppers I know. The LED rechargeable 3-in-1 flashlight is a versatile tool with three quick connect interchangeable heads to fit any scenario. One head is a 600 lumen flashlight, the other is a working light, and the third is a flex light. There's also additional SOS and strobe light modes. I cannot tell you how wonderful it is to have an everyday carry flashlight like the LED rechargeable 3-in-1 flashlight. Now, I've partnered with the creators of the 3-in-1 flashlight to give my audience 20% off from their new 3-in-1 flashlight using my promo code Jericho20 to celebrate the new year. Just go to 3in1flashlight.com or click the link below today. So I got to talk about my kids. Now, when I sign off at all my, all my videos, I talk about my beautiful wife and kids. So it only makes sense that I make a video about my kids. Now, I'm hoping I'm not the only one who has children like this. I don't think I am. But can your children make crumbs out of anything? I could give my kids a glass of water. And when I come back, there's going to be crumbs. How do they do it? I cleaned under. We got hardwood floors. So I got the little dust mop thing for the floor. And I'm going under the kitchen table. And there must have been 17 pounds of food under the table. So if there's that much food on the floor, are they getting enough food in their mouth? I got to start monitoring my kids for weight loss because I don't think they're getting enough food because most of it looks like it landed on the floor. Matter of fact, before I came out here, my son is in the living room and he's eating like a, a granola bar or something. And I said, take that in the kitchen. You're going to make crumbs. You're going to leave crumbs on the floor. And he says, Dad, I won't leave any crumbs. As he's saying that, crumbs are falling out of his mouth. How do you explain that? How do children leave crumbs when it's not possible to leave crumbs? And I got to check my kids for English comprehension. Now, it doesn't matter what your native tongue is. Whatever you speak in your house, does it seem like your children don't understand because I try to keep it simple, not only for them, but for me. And they don't seem last night we're at the, the dinner table and we're talking about, we try to get as many things done the night before as we can. So uh, picking out their outfits, making their lunch, things of that nature. So that's more time. We have to do other things in the morning, whatever we can do the night before my wife and I are pretty good about doing that shit. So we're sitting at the at the dinner table last night. We're talking to my daughter about what she's going to wear today. And today was P.E. day. So she wanted to wear something athletic. She had her little Nikes out and everything. And she said, the pants I'm wearing are dark. So I want to wear a dark sweatshirt. So I said, hey, how about you wear the sweatshirt that I got you when I went to Arizona? It's like this dark green and in black letters, it says Scottsdale. It's nice. I did a good job on this one. And. So we're talking everything. And two minutes later, she goes, Daddy, you know what? I think I'm going to wear that dark green sweatshirt that you got me from Arizona. And I looked at my wife and she looked at me. I was like, did you not hear what I just said 
two minutes ago. And my daughter goes, she's like, yeah, I heard you say something, but I, I didn't really understand what it was. I wasn't really paying attention. And I'm kudos to her for keeping it real. She's like, yeah, I heard sound coming out of your face, but I wasn't really paying attention. I was thinking about other things, probably something not important at all, like her nail color or some shit. But I don't understand it. Do they not speak English? I tell my son, go in there, grab this, bring it back to me. I'm waiting and waiting. That's, I hate to wait. Don't have me sitting and standing here like a fool waiting for you and you're down the hallway picking your nose or something. So I'm waiting and waiting. I peek down the hallway. Son, what are you doing? Huh? What did I ask you to get? I forgot. That's another thing. We associate memory loss with the elderly. That shit needs to be flipped around. Memory loss needs to be associated with young children because they don't remember shit. I forgot. Honey, on your way in there, bring that back to me. Do this before you do that. I come back. What happened? I told you to do this. I forgot. How? Do you have a, a pot addiction that I don't know about? That's messing up your short-term memory? Oh, here's the ultimate right here. Arguing and fighting with each other. People, it has gotten to the point where now it, it's, uh, it's not uncommon two, three times a week that I will, because we have a kitchen table and we have a dining room table in the dining room. And I will send one of them. Usually it's my son. I don't know why, but usually it's my son who gets, oh, I know why. Because my daughter, I don't want to be alone. Somebody come sit in here and talk to me. So I send my son in there, grab your plate, get up and go in the living room. But dad, but nothing. All you guys do is argue and fight. Go in the dining room and eat your food. Stop. You hear always stop. Ow, Psh, ow, he hit me. My son you literally said, she's looking at me. Son, I can't tell your sister what to do with her eyeballs. She can look at you if she wants to. You look the other way. Don't touch me. Stop. Oh, I, I wish there was some, I need to put some, chairs on the roof and just start putting them up on the roof go go up on the roof i don't know what to do with them i already looked into selling them you can't it's like a 30-day window you have to take your kids back we missed the window so they're ours for the for the foreseeable future my daughter's gonna be turning 10 next week uh so she got what eight more years i don't know if she's gonna make it I don't know if she is going to make it. I'm going to find some gypsies to sell these kids to because I don't know what they're fighting about. Do they not realize they're related? You guys are family members, but I do have some hope because my brother and I, we used to fight all the time. I hated my brother, my older brother. I hated him, or I thought I did, and I would tell him every chance I got, I fucking hate you. He would beat me up. He would tease me. He's four years older than me. But that's all right. Don't worry. Don't cry for me, Argentina. Because when I turned 15 and his ass came home on leave from the army, I whooped his ass. And it felt good. <laughs> but now, we're the best of friends. That's my boy. I, I, when I go too long without talking to my brother, I miss him. I'll give him a call. I'll send him a text minute, message. That's my boy now, but growing up, I hated that motherfucker, and he used to make fun of me all the time in front of people, in front of girls and shit. He used to beat me up. Oh, man. One time, I'll tell you, tell you a quick little story time with Uncle Jericho. I'm trying to tell you a story. So, one time, he, uh, my parents were gone, right? And of course, that was prime opportunity for him to fuck with me. So he beats me up or whatever. We used to have, uh, we had stairs in our house. We had 14 stairs. I counted them one time. And so I'm up at the top of the stairs. My brother tied my feet together, my feet together with belts, my hands behind my back with belts. 
All right. Like I said, he's four years older than me. He was bigger than me. I was probably eight or nine years old. So he takes me to the top of the stairs. He grabs a dirty, I remember him grabbing a dirty sock out of the laundry. The sock was so dirty and crusty, it didn't even unfurl when he picked it up. It just stayed scrunched up. This son of a bitch shoves the sock in my mouth, looks at me, looks down the stairs, and looks back at me, and then pushes me down the stairs. Hands and feet bound with a filthy ass, hazardous waste preteen sock in my mouth. So I go downstairs, broom, 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 knocks all the wind out of me and shit. As I hit the bottom of the stairs, I hear my parents' uh, vehicle come back in the driveway. Salvation! So he knew he couldn't do shit to me then. So he runs down the stairs right behind me, takes all the, uh, takes the belt and shit off me, takes the sock out of my mouth, he says, don't, don't, don't tell mom. Please don't tell mom. Don't, Cause I think there's some shit he wanted to do. And if he got in trouble, he wouldn't be able to do it. Oh, please, please don't tell mom. Don't tell mom. So I did not but I have a vengeful side. So I put that back here never to be let go of. So I don't know how long later, maybe a few weeks, a month or something. My parents left again, but when they got back, they were going to take my brother to the mall and you know, the mall to a teenager, especially back. in I don't know how kids feel about the mall now, but back in the day as a teenager, the mall was it. So he was getting ready. And of course he sets this vengeance up for me on a silver platter. Thank you very much. So we had the front side of our house. There was a face, of course, the street face, the other houses on our driveway. We had trees that came up about halfway and it totally blocked the house. But once you pass those trees, it was wide open. You could see the whole front of the house. So what does this dumbass do? He gets out of the shower and he goes, wouldn't it be funny if I went out on the roof and I moon the neighbors? And I said, yes, that would be a great idea. It would be hilarious. So what does he do? He climbs his 13-year-old, 12, 13-year-old dumbass out on the roof and he starts mooning the neighbors. So what do I do in my moment of vengeance? I close the door or close the window because it was too far to jump down. He couldn't just jump down and run his naked ass in the house. It was too far to jump. So I close the window. <laughs> he comes running up to the window. Open the window. I'm trying to cover himself up. Open the window. Open the window. Please open the window. <laughs> And I'm dying laughing because vengeance feels good. So what do I do? I get on the phone and I start calling all the neighbors that I know on that side of the street so they could come out and see my brother's naked ass on the roof. And they sure did. Let me in, let me in, please let me in. He's banging on the window. <laughs> and I'm laughing. But I can't let him in now because he's going to kill me. So what do I do? I leave his ass out there for probably, I don't know, it felt like an eternity. It was probably only 10 or 15 minutes. And my parents' uh, vehicle starts coming up the driveway. You know, you can hear your parents' car coming. And so they're coming up the driveway and they're coming up to the end of that row of trees where they can, oh, it opens up and you can see everything. And if my parents would have caught my brother on that roof, they would have whooped his ass. It was one of those moments when my dad would have said, boy, give your heart to Jesus because your ass belongs to me. <laughs> so I wait until they're just about to clear the trees. I open the window. He jumps in. No time to whoop my ass. I got away with it. <laughs> and I loved it, man. I got a bunch of stories about that crazy ass, about his crazy ass when we were kids. But that's just one of them. <laughs> but kids, I don't get it. And good thing we love them so much. It's not even love. If you got kids, you understand. It's not even love. I love my mom's potato salad. But my kids, your kids, that's just, that's a whole different feeling. That I don't know if it can be quantified in, in words. But they drive me nuts. I love them. They're mine. I wouldn't trade them for the world. And my, like I mentioned, my daughter, she's turning 10 next week. She wants to go on a little shopping spree. Uh, with her mom and uh, her girlfriend, my her best friend lives up here. So the four of them, my wife, her, her best friend, her mom, they want to hit the mall. So what am I going to do? Like any good dad, I'm going to spoil the shit out of her because it makes me feel good to see my daughter happy. 
It makes me feel good to see my daughter made happy by me because someday against my wishes, she is going to change her address, move out in the world, and some dumbass boy she's going to fall in love with. But I have to set that bar high. Hopefully, I can set it out of reach. Nobody will ever be good enough, and she will stay with me forever. It's probably not going to happen, but I'm still looking for that monastery. But I tell you like this, people, make sure that in an emergency, you have the right tool because it is everything. That's why I highly recommend having an everyday carry flashlight. An EDC flashlight is, an essential, is essential for power outages, car trouble, helping others, blinding assailants, and most importantly, peace of mind. The LED rechargeable 3-in-1 flashlight is the personal everyday carry choice for myself and most preppers I know. The LED rechargeable 3-in-1 flashlight is a versatile tool with three quick connect interchangeable heads to fit any scenario. One head is a 600 lumen flashlight, the other is a working light, and the third is a flex light. There's also additional SOS and strobe light modes. I cannot tell you how wonderful it is to have an everyday carry flashlight like the LED rechargeable 3-in-1 flashlight. I've partnered with the creators of the 3-in-1 flashlight to give my audience 20% off of their own 3-in-1 flashlight using my promo code Jericho20 to celebrate the new year. Just go to 3in1flashlight.com or click the link below to get yours today. Now, let me get in here with my beautiful wife and my crazy kids. But you know how it goes. I try to be done with the left, but they just won't let me. Please subscribe. Hit that notification bell because every time it rings, a piece of shit lefty cries. Utilize the link tree link. Get your ass over to JerichoGreen.net. I am Jericho Green. Man, I'm out.